Okay, graphing absolute values again, but this time what we're doing is we're adding or subtracting a number after the absolute value. It's not going to be inside and it's not going to be a number in front of the x. Inside. It's all outside this time. So it's plus 2 outside and subtract 2 outside. And this does have a stark difference too. Uh, with all that great stuff said, let's figure out like the middle point of the table. And all you got to do is the number that you're adding afterwards inside the absolute value. Well, there's nothing inside, so it's 0. And you divide by the number in front of x, which is 1. So it's 0 over 1. There is no number after the x inside the absolute value that you're adding or subtracting. Well, what about the number? But that's outside the absolute value, so that doesn't count. So it's 0. Same thing here. 0 is your point. If there's no number that you're adding or subtracting inside the absolute value itself, then your middle point of your table is 1. But what I'm trying to show you is that you can figure these out without doing that. And I'm going to substitute in the values very quickly to figure out what they're equivalent to and see if you can't do the same thing. It's 2. Absolute value of 0 is 0, but then you're adding 2 afterwards. And the values corresponding in distance to the x values, if they're the same, then they're going to be the same for the y. So if this is one off and one off either way, the value is going to be the same. It's a little different when you use fractions. You've got to be careful about that. Absolute value of 0 is 0, but then you're subtracting 2 outside. So I'm going to graph them. The domain and range are a little bit different for all these, so this one I will stress. And we're going to graph the first one first. It's a basic function. I went ahead and plotted that very quickly because it's pretty easy. The domain is going to be the same for all of them. It's going to extend the entire surface, all x values. You can use any x value you want. That's why the domain is from negative infinity to infinity. The range, however, is going to be different. For this value, the lowest y value is 0 and goes up. So it's from 0 to infinity. It includes 0, which is why it's a square bracket. It never reaches infinity, why it's just why it's circular. I'm going to graph this one next in black, if you can even see the difference. This one's different. It's shifted up. See, when you add 2 after the absolute value, if it's a positive number, it goes up. So when you subtract the number, where do you think it's going to start? Down. The range is different. The lowest value is 2 and goes all the way up to infinity. I'm going to go ahead and graph this one in brown. Hopefully you'll see the difference. And the range, the lowest value is negative 2, and it extends all the way up. So, if it's a number inside the absolute value, if it's negative, it shifts to the right. If it's positive, it shifts to the left. If it's after the absolute value and it's positive, it goes up. If it's negative, it goes down. And if it's a number inside the absolute value, uh, in front of the x, it shifts how high it goes, how fast it goes. You know, if the number is 1, then it goes like this. If the, num if the number is 1, it goes like this. If the number is bigger, then it goes up faster. And if the number is smaller than 1, it goes up slower. That's pretty much it there. We're going to try one more example, like what happens when you do a negative or a number in front of the absolute value. But that should cover pretty much everything that we do with absolute values, at least a pretty general 
very good, more than basic understanding. But until then, have a good day.